Welcome back, everybody, to the ECL Pro Broadcast put on by NHL Gamer. I am It's King Lime. He is the man, Timo. And we just got to cast a couple of great games, and we're in for two more big ones, Ty. Yeah, I mean, what a start. Obviously, like I said, this is my first broadcast with the ECL, and that's a great way to start things off. Dynastia obviously doing a great job coming out on top of both those games, but the Boomers holding their own against that top-seeded team. Yeah, and we get to have a look at how everyone else did, Ty, as we have live results for you guys here on the broadcast. And Ty, my man, what do you have a look at here and anything that stands out to you, my friend? I mean, we've got a three overtime games, three overtime finishes in this uh, set of stats here. So obviously, you know, the one that we had just saw between Dunastia and the Boomers going to overtime, but also some other close matchups uh, between Afro Dunk and RCTIC looking uh, pretty close in that four to three game. And But there's also some big uh, differentials too. Afro Dunk playing another game against RCTIC and uh, they're coming out on top of that one, five to one. So obviously a big difference in those games. No Rex at the bottom there, uh, losing that one to Lulia Hockey, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, we've, we've got some live results too, like I said, from the games that we just saw. So... <laughs> Yeah, no, I swear no Rex is trying out there, but they got the T-Rex trying to hand out broken sticks and he's got the tiny arms. It's really delayed. They got to figure that out. So exactly, a, lot, yeah. a lot of super close games though, Ty. A lot of one goal games, like you said, three overtime games. Obviously, this is a very, very close ECL Pro division. I would have to agree with you. And it's just exciting to see more of this as it pans out. Like we said, we're early in the season here. This is only week two, but it's nice to see how close this is. Yeah, let's have a look at how these results affect the standings as we talked about how we want to see if people go up or down. And what do you see here, Ty? Well, obviously, we see the boomers dropping. Um, you know, Dynastia obviously staying at the top, but we do see the boomers dropping after having two really solid games, which is an unfortunate result for them. But here we are. Yeah, I did notice that Penta has dropped a couple spots there, Ty. We saw them on the left side of the board when we looked earlier today. It now looks like they're sitting in 10th position. And the Deadly Fandoms jumping up a spot up to the 5th position. So those are the two teams we are going to be looking at in our second matchup. And why don't we look at who's going to be playing for those teams, Ty? That sounds great to me. So the lineups here for Deadly Phantoms against Penta on the left-hand side of your screen. You're looking at Penta. It is going to be Kevinator, Krinke, Aiken, Giselle, Domi, and Darcivo. And obviously some great players over there on Penta, Ty. Yeah, definitely. We don't see any league leaders in this matchup. Obviously, we have a couple of teams that are a little bit lower in the standings. So aside from the Deadly Phantoms, who are still in the mix on the left side. But uh, yeah, some very strong competition. I think both these teams are fairly close too in terms of goal differential for what they've scored and what they've had scored against them. So I think this is going to be a pretty closely contested matchup. Yeah, for the Deadly Phantoms on the right-hand side of your screen, you will see Patton at center, Flo on left wing, Profane Kiss on right wing, Frankie lefty, Psycho righty, and RPH in between the pipes. And you know what, Ty? Just because this is a middle of the group game does not mean it is going to be anything short of full excitement. No, exactly. I'm expecting a highly contested matchup here, and uh, I really can't wait to see how this one pans out as well. As the face-off game within the game, we have another one here, Ty. As Kevinator, you see him on the left-hand side of your screen. He's got a face-off percentage of 62.3%, while Patton is sitting at a 48.5. We saw the game within the game be crucial in the last game. Ty, do you think we're going to see it again here in this game of two? I mean, I honestly would not be surprised, but something else that stands out to me is their power play, their special team percentages. We've got, you know, we have the Penta team 
um, looking very strong on their penalty kill with 84.62%, but their power play is 100%. Maybe they don't have many chances yet, but that's 100% nonetheless. So we got to watch out for that because on the other side of things, the power play percentage is fairly low at 22% and then the penalty kill around 50%. So this could be a very good special teams matchup, but you have to give the nod to Penta in that regards. Yeah, and not only that, Penta also has a better goal differential, don't they? So with the Deadly Phantoms being ahead in the standings, it does not mean by any means that this Penta team can't put the puck in the net. No, you're right. I mean, I, like I said, I think this is going to be a highly contested game, even though there is that difference in the standings between these two teams. Yeah, as uh, we did speak about, Ty, it is very, very early in the season. This is only week two, correct? So, um, but Penta, after losing two, you have to come back and, and get at least a point here, wouldn't you think, Ty? Yeah, I mean, I think they need a very strong showing in this broadcast here between these two games. Like you said, dropping the last two doesn't look good. They drop in the standings. We have the Phantoms sitting quite a bit higher than them. So it's going to be interesting to see how this matchup plays out. Yeah, it is going to be very interesting as Penta looking to get back to the left side of the board. That healthy, nice, gorgeous left side of the board where everybody wants to be, Ty, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I think the left side is where everyone wants to be, like you said. But, uh, you know, like we said, it's early in the season. Just because right. you're on the right side doesn't mean much right now. Doesn't mean anything. We know of a St. Louis Blues team way back that I think was in last place and they ended up coming back and winning a cup. So regardless of where you are, you cannot be discouraged, Ty. Is, uh, you can win any time. And speaking of winning, you guys can win as well. Get your hands on a PS5, Ty. Let them know how. What a segue. You can win this Gorgeous PS5 by filling out the community survey. Um, all you have to do is fill it out. Let you let us know what you think of NHL Gamer, and you have a chance to win this PS5. Yes, that's right. Is you may not be able to find one, but you can when NHL Gamer is sending it to you. So fill out your community survey for a chance to win that gorgeous PS5 Digital Edition. Is me and Ty um, not even sure what they look like at this point? So um, we're gonna be someone's gonna be lucky to take that one away, isn't it? As is, uh, we gotta thank our sponsors. Um, of course, at uh, X Bill Wilhelm, Kovan Lakriti, and ST Hockey as we wait for the teams to get themselves fired up and ready to go in this great matchup tonight, Ty. Yeah, I like you said, I mean, another great matchup ahead of us. I'm I'm excited to see how it pans out. As we said, you know, there is a difference in the standings, but that doesn't really matter. The goal differentials are fairly close. But like I said, I think it could be a special teams matchup here. I hopefully we don't see as many players in the box as the last matchup, but we'll see. As we'll touch base a little on that, as the players do uh, are getting themselves back into the dressing room ready to go. One player forgot his skates. Mama, had to, never mind. But uh, so he's going to get himself back ready to go into the lobby. But yeah, Ty, the power play and the penalty kill. Special teams are crucial, my friend. They did not play very much in game one, even though the box was like a hotel revolving door at one point. Well said, well said. Yeah, I mean, we like you said, I mean, there was a lot of penalties and we didn't see a ton of power play goals. We did see a lot of opportunities, but we need to see the puck in the back of the net on those power plays for whoever's getting the opportunity. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. The puck has to go in when you're on the power play. You know, you have a team like uh, Dynastia in our last game that was literally in the box six or seven times and still came out with a W. When you are going against high-placed teams that are going to give you opportunities like that, Ty, you have to capitalize. And that's what Pent is going to look to do to the Phantoms to try and gain a few spots here in the standings in this group. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Penta can keep that power play percentage alive 100%. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Right. So let's see how this pans out. That's right. It doesn't get any better than that. We'll see if they'll get a couple more power play goals to add on to that. But those are still some great numbers. As yeah. the power play goals... Um, it is Krinky that has, uh, or Krinke that has uh, both of them. He's got two power play goals on the season. I don't see them anywhere else, so I'd assume that those are going to be the two from Penta. So maybe watch for the left winger on the power play for Penta tie. 
Yep. I mean, it seems familiar from what we saw last game. Watch for that left winger. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? As it was Picari, wasn't it, in the game one and two, as uh, the Boomers did a very good job of shutting him down, Ty. I think they might have been listening to you. I don't know if you're coaching the Boomers. I know we're up in that age range, but like, I don't know if you're coaching these guys, but they definitely listen to you. They put on a great showing and kind of shut down Dynastia in that second game. So maybe we'll see see that type of hockey move into here but we have two new teams and this could be all offense all defense who knows Ty yeah um, we won't know until we get to the game so hopefully we will be seeing that soon I can't wait to see how this pans out yet again I mean like we said we've got some pretty big differences in the standings but it's early in the season so I I just really want to see how this one goes Right, and the goaltenders in both of these games for the Deadly Fandoms, we have RPH. He's got a pretty good record for 2-2 two and two with a 78.6 save percentage and a 2.25 goals against average with a shutout there, Ty. So doing a pretty good job there for the Deadly Phantoms. And on the other side, Penta is going to be a Darcivo, and he has four games played. Not so lucky there with 1-3 on the record with a 75 and and a half goals against average with a three point or sorry a 75 and a half save percentage not goals against average sorry Darcyvo don't come after me for that one <laughs> and uh with a three and a half goals against average I couldn't imagine a 75 time my voice would be lost yeah no kidding I mean that would be a lot of goals obviously no shutouts for him either um but you know uh, y- Obviously, anything under 80 in NHL is kind of subpar, but they are fairly close between the two goalies. But it's going to be interesting to see how this matchup, uh, how this goalie matchup pans out and and to see who comes out on top in this series. Yeah, that's right. As I believe Frankie finally got his skates. He's getting them laced up now, and we're going to be ready to go very shortly, Ty. But any predictions as you have a look at these stats on both teams for the Deadly Phantoms and for Penta, as you look at those forwards, maybe a defenseman, maybe a goalie, who is going to be your player to watch here for the Phantoms and for Penta? I mean, I'm seeing one glaring stat here that you don't see often, but it looks like Flo... Um, Flo from the Deadly Phantoms, he has 39 hits. So I'm looking to see some big hits in this game. Uh, you know, him taking the body and hopefully turning that into some turnovers. And then you never know what comes from that, right? So that's one of the glaring stats that I'm seeing here. And to be honest with you, that is huge this year in 22 is you get the big body guy to kind of lay into the player and then you have good puck support in either your left defenseman or your left winger or if it's on the right hand side, your right defenseman or your right winger to to pick up that puck and get going the other way, Ty. And you're absolutely right. I've seen breakaway after breakaway of a defenseman getting bumped and a winger just picking it up and being gone. And maybe that's what you're seeing with Flo having 39 hits because wow that is a lot of hits and then you look down the list on the deadly phantoms and you actually have two power play goals from the back end coming from psycho on the point so we saw a game a winner come from the point last game maybe some more goals from the point from the phantoms in this one tie yeah i mean obviously like you said two power play goals coming from the point you'd expect to see a little bit more offense maybe on the power play from that point um different strategies for different teams you kind of saw the umbrella coming into play like you said with the boomers i'd imagine that would be a similar strategy here for the phantoms if they're trying to get those goals in from the point yeah, uh, I would agree with you. As most of these European teams do set up with that umbrella, you don't see that a lot in North America. I also have seen the Euros like to bring a defenseman down and pop him in front of the net to run that umbrella, which has been very, very interesting to see. And it's just so awesome, Ty, to get a taste of the NA and the EU. Uh, you know, to see their play styles be mixed together would be phenomenal. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Like you said, I mean, they do play so differently. So, but it looks like we're getting ready to head into the game here. And here we go. Period number one in the ECHL Pro put on by the amazing NHL gamer. You see your respective lineups in the bottom corner. And Trinke throws an early shot on, and that's going to be a big save by RPH. And oh, a late hit tie, a big one by Trinke laying out Patton. And the bucket goes flying too, no whistle on the play. 
Wow. Maybe a little bad blood between these two teams we don't know about, Ty. If there wasn't before, there could be now, that's for sure. <laughs> I agree with that one as Patton moves that back to Psycho, right hand side. Profane Kiss brings it in, poked off by Giselle. Here comes it. Aiken. Patton pulls that one off, and it's going to be moved up the ice by the Phantoms. They're offside, they got a touch up. Goes back to Psycho, middle to Patton. Patton gets bumped off the puck. Psycho, profane kiss, down to Flo. Flo, back to the point of Frankie. Fires, that one's intercepted. And Aiken goes over to Krinke. The middle to Patton, over to profane kiss, and deadly phantoms work the puck in. Now in the middle, over to the left-hand side, and Flo scores! He not only hits players, but the back of the net. Aye. There you go, Flo reaching double digits for goals on the season with that one. Now he has 10 goals, and this is only his ninth game, so keeping it at a goal per game pace or just over. And way to sneak that puck in, Ty. Unbelievable. It looked like Darcivo was there, but not able to get his blocker on it. Just because you're there doesn't mean you're going to stop it. That's right. Just because you're there doesn't mean you're there. <laughs> exactly. EA Sports as uh, Aiken goes out game. front. As Pat, left hand side to flow up to Profane. Profane brings it in, pops that one back to Frankie. Frankie, good pass. Down to flow the goal scorer, but Aiken gets it ahead to Krinke. What a pass over to Kevinator, and he goes bar down. What a one-timer. The speed on that one as he let it go was like a rocket from the top of his stick there. I wonder if he's got the one TX factor on as he absolutely ripped that tie. I mean, if he doesn't, uh, that either way, just a, a great shot. And we've got a tie game. So pretty familiar territory for us, Ty. 1-1 in the first period. As Frankie brings the puck out for the Phantoms. Goes over to his deep partner, Psycho, back to Frankie. Frankie, nice pass up the middle to Patton. Trying to bring it all the way through, but Giselle with a good pickup. Or Gazelle, sorry. Puck behind the net. Crinke looking for the wraparound. Aiken, back to the point, shot is on, is gonna be steered away by RPH, an easy save, but that one not so easy. Aiken trying to make something happen, it pops back out to the point. Kevinator with a backhand shot on, and RPH has had to been sharp here, Ty. No kidding, uh, Penta looking relentless here on that offensive uh, chance there. There's a couple of good saves, but Patton's going to go to work. He drops that one out front. It's going to be picked off. Aiken tries to move the puck out. Profane Kiss picks it up for the Phantoms. Profane trying to dump that one in. He can't get it through, and it's going to be Krinke. Krinke, out front, it's loose, and a good pickup by Psycho. He tries to clear, but Gazelle holds that one in. Psycho gets it back for the Phantoms. Patton left-hand side to Flo. Flo, the goal scorer, trying to get it over to Profane Kiss, but a great interception by Patton. Gets it up to Aiken. Aiken. Profane kiss for the Phantoms. Goes over to Frankie. They dump that one in and just trap up. And that's pretty interesting there in a 1-1 hockey game tie. As Krinke comes in on the right-hand side. Takes it down low behind the net. Back to the point. Shot is on. And a great save, RPH. We're seeing a lot of point shots from Penta so far here. We'll see if they manage to start getting some good secondary chances off of those. As we saw a little Omaha play that worked, Flo on the right-hand side. He's going to pick it up. Shot is on! And a good job by Kevinator. He's going to start a three on two, but they're offside with 2.49 to go. Love to see this close contested game yet again. I mean, obviously our last matchup was very close in both games, and it looks like we're getting more of that from this second matchup. Krinke. Brings it over the line, tries to get it over the on the side to Aiken, back to Krinke, back to Aiken. Aiken moves it back over to Krinke. But the puck is picked up, and Patton tries to move it ahead for the Phantoms. Phantoms resetting in the neutral zone. Puck brought in by Penta, they can't connect. Patton has it poked off his stick. A lot of neutral zone hockey. 
It's crazy. Yeah, so far, not line. a lot of opportunities for that uh, that face-off percentage to play into things here, as we haven't had a lot of whistles yet. There's a couple of good blocks in front of the blocks. Stay familiar there, Ty, but you're right, not a bunch of whistles. Pretty good game so far. It's nice to see another closely contested game as we go into the second period with a one-to-one -one tie. So one-to-one -one tie in the first period. We've seen that in every game so far, Ty, and a great job by both of these goalies to keep it that way. Yep, you're not wrong. I mean, there's obviously been some great chances at either end of the ice so far, and both these goalies standing tall aside from the one goal that managed to sneak by both of them. We'll take a look at both of these goals here, Ty. Why don't you walk us through what you see here? All right, so we have the deadly phantoms with possession here. They toss it off to the side, manage to get that puck off a bounce, sends it across, and that one finds its way in the back of the net off a beautiful one-timer. And we're going to see something similar here with this second goal as Penta trying to work this one through. Beautiful pass across, finding its way through the seam. And there you go, another one-timer goal. Great stuff from Ty as he walks you through those goals. And we will get back to period number two in the ECHL Pro presented to you by NHL Gamer Deadly Phantoms against Penta. You see their lineups and records in the bottom corners of your screen if you were wondering. Patton hasn't poked off his stick, but Profane gets it back to Patton. Patton. Back to the point. Good turn there by Frankie. He tried to go to his partner, Psycho, but it's going to be jarred back in to Phantom's territory, and Psycho brings it out. Right hand side to Profane. Profane sends that all the way around. Good chop there by Aiken, but it gets onto the stick of the Phantoms at the point. Frankie, good poke check there by Aiken. Aiken coming down with Krinke. He's going to take it all the way himself. He scores! But I don't know, Ty. Are we honestly watching the same games as the last matchup? Because didn't we see this in the last matchup as well? 1-1, one, one, puck on the goal line, kicked in. I don't know, I gotta get my crystal ball. This is too weird here, Ty. Yeah, no kidding. No surprise there that that one didn't count. Still a one-to-one -one game. But we're gonna get a neutral zone face-off. It's won by Penta. They try to send that one in deep. Patton's first to the puck and he brings it out right-hand side to Profane. Hits Psycho, and they dump that one in. I think they might be offside, but it doesn't matter. The lady in Shawinigan's taking that one. But we'll get another face-off here in the neutral zone. That one is going to be tied up, and here comes Aiken. Aiken drops that one to Kevinator. Kevinator goes back to the point, back down low. That one's picked off by Frankie. And Frankie gets that up. Good pick off there by Domi. Domi fighting with Flo on the left-hand side. Flo gets it down to Profane. Profane, two Penta players going after him behind the net. And there's that double coverage you spoke about, Ty. And I'm not sure if you managed to catch that, but there was a massive hit from Flo there as well, doing what he does best. Because that one's going to be bumped off and all the way back out for the Phantom. So you heard it there, Flo. Trying to get the momentum going, and he does down the left-hand side. Across to Profane, and what a save by Darcevo! But the puck finds its way back to Profane, and he scores! You have to feel for Darcevo there as he makes the initial save, and even another after that. But the deadly phantoms keep up the pressure, and they get the goal on the rebound. What a gorgeous goal there. Back door, as you do got to feel for Darcevo as he made a gorgeous first toe save. But what about the non-quit resilience from Profane time? Yeah, I mean, just a, an awesome effort there to be where he needed to be, right place, right time, puts that rebound in the back of the net. We've seen lots of that, haven't we, Ty? Right place, right time has been most of the goals tonight. I mean, I think you're going to see that a lot from the pro and elite divisions as these guys have high hockey IQ and they know what they're doing out there and they know where they should be. 
Yeah, I would agree. I'd say most of the goals that we do witness are not necessarily off amazing passing plays, but mistakes from the other team that one side is capitalizing on. As there you see one as uh, beaten to the puck as the Phantoms get a good scoring chance as Krenke comes down for Penta. He takes it behind the net, goes back to the pointer to Domi. Domi fires that one on. It's going to be blocked there by Cycle, and we have a three on two. It's going to be Patton. He goes on the Wait, and what a poke check from behind by Gazelle as he's looking like a gazelle as he chased him down with a great poke check there. Well said, obviously, uh, you know, a great poke, not tripping his man up, being behind him, that's hard to do. Yeah, Ty, it is very hard to do, but a good play. Here's a face off play for Vane comes in. And that one's going to be carried out here by Penta. Here comes Kevinator. Couple of pucks get jarred loose, and here goes Psycho up the left-hand side on the breakout. He looks for the middle, couldn't connect the pass as Patton was trying to get through. Patton does pick it up. Over, shot is on, and a great save by Darcivo. They may be losing this game right now, but Penta's goalie, Darcivo, is doing a great job of of, you know, staying in the moment and making sure that this lead doesn't get any bigger for the Deadly Phantoms. And that is a feel-good poke check by Gazelle as he is a former longtime Phantom player. So, you know the chirps are flying while he's chasing that guy down on the breakaway tie. Well, he's not the only one either. Krinke, a former player as well for the other team. So, I mean, we have some familiarity between these teams. We definitely do is a couple of guys out there. I'm sure the chirps are flying around. As here comes Aiken, he moves that one ahead. Good self sauce by Kevinator. He takes it, looks up front, and a pick off by Frankie's. He almost had the lane. And then a 200 foot penalty there by Aiken. You know, you got to give credit to the defense there, being in the right place at the right time. Frankie getting that one and then getting tripped up right after so that they can go on the power play. Face off in the offensive zone for the Phantoms. Not as many power plays as earlier, Ty, but this one's going to be one back. Frankie goes over to Psycho. Psycho back to Frankie as they set up in the umbrella again and the tip in front by Patton as we see the umbrella once again, Ty. That was a nice save uh, by Darcivo there. Obviously great positioning right in the center of the net and able to grab that one. It was tipped wide. Face off is going to be carried out. But it's going to be right back onto the Phantom Stick as they go to work on the power play. One minute to go. Good job here in the neutral zone by Penta to clear the puck. Goes off of the skate of Frankie. Takes a retrieval pass from Flo, and the puck's brought in by Patton. Patton behind the offensive net. Wrap around it, still loose, and a good save again by Darcivo. I respect the effort on the wraparound. Not something you see utilized a lot in these higher leagues, but Darth Sivo is there to make that save. Face off is going to be poked away. Patton fighting for it on the left hand side. Profane Kiss comes in a good support. Flow drops that one back. Nobody was there. And that does it for the power play there for the Phantom. So nothing doing. Puck through the middle. Patton tries to carry it down. Four seconds to go out front to flow, but Domi, it's loose. The shot is on his save by Darcivo. And Frankie almost got a backhand in. What a last second opportunity there by Frankie. Driving the net as a defenseman, just trying to get something to go before the final seconds of the period. As that is a close, close period there at the end, isn't it? Ty, as we saw a kick save that I'm not even sure Darcivo knew he had. I mean, obviously we're getting some really good matchups here. Uh, the first matchup, a very closely contested matchup, and now this one as well. So I'm glad that we're seeing that, and I can't wait to see how the rest of this game pans out. So there it is. You're taking a look at it here. They're going to show us. They probably heard us talking about it. And it was a, a block clear tie and a great one at that by Frankie, the defenseman, actually coming down and taking advantage of that. As we're going to get a look at the goal here, take it away. 
Yep, obviously, there it is. See, right place, right time. A little rebound on the side of the net, and Darcivo can't stop that one as it's put in the back of the net. He got the first one there, didn't he, Ty? The second one off of the post and trickles in. Right place, right time, buddy. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, that one's kind of on the defense because as a goalie, your job is to make the first save, first and foremost. You gotta, just like basketball, you got to rebound that thing out of there. Am I right? That's right. As you see your respective lineups in the bottom corner, period number three in the ECL Pro. Presented by NHL Gamer and everybody back behind us. He is Baker and Timo. I am It's King Lion. Puck behind the net is going to be wrapped back to the point. That one's turned over, and here goes Flo. Does he have Profane with him? He hits him. Profane, can he get in? It's loose with a stat pad saved by Dardivo, and the puck's the other way by Aiken. Aiken across. What an interception as the puck goes back and forth with speed. Profane over to Patton. Patton to Flo. Drops that back over to Frankie. Fired on, and that one's blocked. And look at this. Penta right back the other way with speed. Krinke trying to bring that in, and we finally get a little bit of a break just kidding kevinator across and that one's off the back and it's squeezed by rph rph just closing the door there as that one tried to squeak through i almost feel like we're watching three on three hockey right now with the way this is going back and forth wow what an exciting start to the third period. Domi shoots and that one trickles wide. What a shot by Domi. Kevin Ader now looks back door, but a good job there by Frankie to get in the way. Flo moves that ahead to Profane Kiss. Profane back to Flo. Flo moves that back to Frankie, back to Flo. Flo looking back to the point. I think he was looking for Patton and he finds it. Patton sends that around behind the net to Flo to Profane. In front, what a save! And oh. Oh, no! Is a huge save by Darcivo. You could hear me and Ty gasping for air by that first one, and the second one trickles through. Just an absolutely tremendous sa a pad save there as he comes across with the split save, but it kicks out that rebound. And this is what I'm talking about with the defense. You know, it's I mean, there's not much you can do there with no man there to cover that, and the goalie's a little bit out after making that incredible save. I feel so bad for Darcivo. That is two uh, goals, I'd say, that he was there. Uh, like the blocker uh, one, I'd say he was probably there where Flo snuck that one in. And then this one too, it kind of squeezes between his five. Well, while he has his legs there, you're going to get another look at it ear time. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to discredit Darcivo here. He's playing a good game. He's just catching some bad bounces or the Phantoms are catching some good bounces. So right. good hockey by the Phantoms to put the puck on net and look for that rebound. I would see that we're going to see a lot more of that strategy from the Deadly Phantoms in this game because it's working for them. Yeah, that one drizzled through like some Cole Von Lacrity. As the puck is moved ahead by Patton, he fires that one. It sails wide. Here goes Krenke. Moving the puck up, Penta looking to get something going here in this third period. They need something to build on here, Ty. As a little bit of momentum, some pressure. You need something in this 3-1 game, right? I mean, we need to see them do what the Boomers did in their first game where they managed to come back and score that second goal to make it 3-2. They did drop that second of uh, the game, but you never know. If Penta can get a goal here and kill some of that momentum, we might see a very close finish. And they are pressuring hard and trying to do so as Krinke sends that one across and RPH had to be sharp and hold that one on the line. I have to wonder if that was actually a pass attempt there, but sometimes those pass attempts can sneak through a goalie, so good save there by RPH. Face off is won back by the Phantoms as every offensive zone or defensive zone draw, I guess, for the Phantoms is important, as you've heard me and Ty talk about more than once. Here comes Profane. Good pass to Frankie. He's hit, and here's the chance. Kringe comes down, fires. Great blocker saved by RPH. And that one's all the way back down into Penta territory. Here comes Pat. Large... Sorry, go ahead. No, sorry. I just saw him intercept that. You carry on now, Ty. Which is going to say something that I think we're seeing a lot from the Phantoms is their ability to get to that second chance. And, and there, there it go. is. Just no like you're second saying. chance needed. No, no second chance needed. But at the same time, it is a second chance play. So I think you're right. As they got into the zone, they didn't capitalize. But here they pick it up on the right-hand side. And that's just all resilience, Ty. As he walks that in and tucks it five-hole. 
Yeah, you love to see it. You really do. Um, if the if honestly, if Penta can't start getting some of those second chances themselves, I think this one's gonna be uh, over fairly quickly with only 6:21 left to go in the third. As guys, if you're enjoying our awesome ECL Pro coverage today, make sure you guys tune in tomorrow for the ECL Elite coverage with a couple of me and Ty's good buddies. And oh there's my a gosh! What a goal time! Walk us through that one, baby! I mean, I said earlier, you don't see that wraparound utilized a lot in these higher leagues, but man, what a goal there! Taking the rebound, again, a second chance opportunity, but that is very unfortunate, as you can see, that goes off the pad of Darcivo there and finds a way through. As poor Darcivo is, uh, that's about the third one that's hit him and gone in there. Is You can't discredit him, as he still played very good. Yeah, I think his positioning's been sound. I think he's just kind of, you know, catching some of the bad breaks. And like I said, the deadly phantoms are catching good breaks, so. All right, Puck is gonna be moved around in the neutral zone. Penta, four minutes to go. Ty, I think at this point it becomes starting to build on for the next game. I would agree. I mean, that's this interesting situation with these matchups. You do have back-to-back -back games. So now we could easily see these deadly phantoms go and take some of them that, that momentum into the next game. Puck is going to be brought out by Aiken. Over to Cranky. That's a good poke. And the defense tie has been amazing for the phantoms. They stand up at the line and they trap hard. And I, oh my gosh, by big damn save. As he comes across and flashes a leather tie. Yeah, I mean, and to your point about the defense, maybe that's why we're not seeing so many secondary chances for Penta, which is keeping them off the scoreboard. Wow, what a save. And it doesn't matter, Ty, if the defense stops him, because look at these saves by RPH, as he has played phenomenal. Yeah, RPH is standing tall and uh, looking good doing it. You know what, he does look good, Ty. I'm with you on that. Here goes Profane. He sends that over to the left-hand side. Flo tries to hit Patton, but the pass doesn't connect. Domi with a good interception, but he ends up turning that one over to Profane, and Profane goes over to Frankie. Frankie, up to Flo. Flo, shot on, and there's a 200 IQ play as Profane chases down a loose puck and scores. Yeah, you gotta give all the credit to Flo there, even though... You've got the rebound that is the goal, but that's Flo's play there, putting the puck on net nice and lightly, pops out a rebound, and there you go, a little backhander to the back of the net. And that's a 200 IQ play by the winger that took that shot, isn't it, Ty? As he notices he's not going to be able to get that pass to Profane, so he takes the shot, it gets kicked out, and that's a, just a great, great play, even though that goal doesn't really matter. Yeah, but I mean, it does kind of matter in the sense that you said, where we have back-to-back -back games between these teams. They have that momentum really going now, and it's going to be hard for Penta to come back and really group up in that second game. Yeah, so I think it's safe to say at this point that it is going to be a big W here for the Deadly Phantoms as we get one more offside with nine seconds to go time. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I didn't expect to see such a large goal differential between these two teams with them having, respectively, pretty close goal differentials themselves for their team. So. Face off is going to be won back by the winners. The Deadly Phantoms are going to bring it in. Maybe try for one more. A couple good saves by Darcivo, but he's just going to wrap this one up. And Deadly Phantoms take game one in this uh, two game series as we have one more left time yeah i mean this game looked fairly close in the first period of play but then it was just those secondary chances that the phantoms were getting and that they were stopping penta from getting so there you go it translates on the board we see a six to one score and a big w like you said for the phantoms yeah, massive W, and uh, the Phantoms must be feeling good as they are just climbing those standings, Ty. We, got, we looked at them the first time, and they've climbed since then, and if they keep on this track, they're going to be climbing up and hanging out with their guys over uh, at the top of the board there. Yeah, I mean, you play like that enough, and you could see yourself getting up in that elite division. That's the lovely thing about the ECL and the different divisions is how things go like that. Yeah, it's always exciting to see a team go up or get relegated as that does make it tons of fun, doesn't it, Ty? It certainly we, does. We've got 
One more game for you tonight with the Deadly Phantoms against Penta. And look at the shots there. 21 to 11. We're going to get a re roll of the replays here, Ty. Why don't you walk us through some of these? All right, let's take a look here at the first goal. We see a nice pass across, and he just tries to put that one through, but that was a big glove save, so not a goal, but a beautiful save there. That was a gorgeous save, flashing the leather. I think we're going to get a look at some of the goals now, though, Ty, as this one looked to be started out on a bit of a three-on-two. You're right. It looks like a three-on-two developing. Holds it, pass across, and fires that one right by. Nice try by Darcivo. Good positioning, but just could not get the blocker on that one. Yeah, that was a tough one for Darcivo. One of the ones it looked like he was there for. That was a great pass over by Profane Kiss to find Flo. It wasn't their first time connecting, as we see another one here. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, Penta, obviously, they, they have good playmaking, and they just weren't able to capitalize, like we said, on those secondary scoring chances. As this one was a bit interesting. Is it that, that there's so many different pieces to that goal tie? Is it bounced off the back of the net, pop flied out front, went off the post and trickled in? Yeah, I mean, I do think there's a little bit of luck involved in that play. But at the same time, you had people in the right spot, right place, right time, like we've been saying through this broadcast. And that that translates. It does. You can see it on the scoreboard. That is a gorgeous goal. The way that one built out is the puck movement by the deadly phantoms was uh, deadly, so to speak. As we'll get a look at, I think this is uh, one of their last ones. Is this one kind of just turned into a two on one ear tie? Yeah, I mean, that's a great, uh, great defensive play in the offensive zone for them to get possession of that puck and take it to the net. As we go through these goals, a lot of these look odd, man, don't they? They certainly do, and I think that's where the hockey IQ plays in, as you said. I mean, you see guys going to places, um, you know, that maybe Penta wasn't picking up on. You know, just a couple steps ahead for the Deadly Phantoms. As this is a great, great play by the Deadly Phantoms. That is very, very smart for them to take that shot, Ty, instead of chancing the pass. Yeah, agreed. And I mean, look at the shots in this game. You see the Deadly Phantoms putting 21 shots on net. That's more than we saw in both the last two games from one team. So there you go. As we get a look, shots 8-8. Eight to eight. Time on attack was actually led by Penta there, Ty. Yeah, that's actually a little bit surprising, but um, I, evidently they weren't doing enough with their time on attack. Yes, is it... Six to one game there, Ty, and well, Penta needs to step it up a little bit as they are seeing themselves travel from the left side of the standings to the right side, and now it's starting to trickle down effect. Yeah, and unfortunately, I mean, I do think they have some good things that they could have built on there, but they're going to have to put this game behind them. Anything that went good, obviously keep that in the forefront of their minds, but the rest of that, the score and all that aside, you just got to put that behind you and look forward to this next game. Right, the game within the game, power play zero to one for the fandoms, but that didn't really matter, did it, Ty? And the face-offs were actually led by Penta, but still not able to make anything happen with it. Yeah, obviously, I mean, I think a lot of it came down to, like we were saying, those secondary scoring chances that the Deadly Phantoms happen to be capitalizing on and also shutting down. Penta wasn't able to get those chances, so good defensive play on the Phantoms' part. Yeah, very good defensive play and amazing offense as well as they were a full force in this 6-1 hockey game. Um, changes from pen to tie. What needs to change for these guys is you got to watch that whole game and it was just... A little lackluster. It's a good, that's a good question. I mean, obviously they have a great power play percentage. If they can find ways to make right. the deadly phantoms, you know, be a little bit undisciplined and get them into the box, who knows? Maybe we'll see a different score, but not a lot of power plays, not a lot of special teams for, I honestly thought this would be a little bit of a special teams matchup, but now we're not right. seeing that. So I'm not sure what Penta needs to do. Obviously they need to switch things up a little bit. And like I said, put that last game behind them because six to one is not ideal. And that could get into your head. Hopefully Darcivo is able to keep his head on his shoulders and not let that creep into the back of his mind that he let in six. Right, because that is a, uh, it's tough when you're there 
uh tie like it's it's great to get six scored on you whatever but if you get four of those scored on you when you're in position that's got to be tough on the brain you know if you're not there you're not there but if you're there exactly you're wondering what do i have to change but maybe he doesn't need to change much like i was saying i think some of those opportunities were on penta defense i think they need to do a better job with perhaps their center and their defenseman of playing more of a spread out defensive game almost play a triangle in front of the net and see if they can get some of those rebounds because that would make a huge difference for them the phantoms obviously putting 21 shots on net a lot of those were secondary scoring chances so we'll see what happens in this next game and odd man rushes too so i agree play that triangle down low and kind of make sure you're taking care of your own end first ty we spoke about how um we thought esports is a little more capitalizing on other teams mistakes more than making the perfect play so to speak exactly yeah i mean you saw the possession too obviously penta they had more time uh on attack but they just weren't able to translate that and i think that's due to the the defense of the phantoms the deadly phantoms yeah and when the the defense wasn't there rph is making crazy come across glove saves so like he certainly it was really, it doesn't matter if your defense isn't going to be there when you have a goalie like rph behind you very surprising exactly. in this 6-1 game tie as uh, the goal differential for penta was actually very good coming into this one yeah, it was close. And speaking of surprising, let's talk about some prizing. We've got the PS5 that is available. If all you got to do, let them know, Lime, let them know. Guys, make sure that you fill out the community survey for a chance to win a PS5 that's going to be flown in on a unicorn from Narnia. Yes, it is a digital edition tie and somebody is going to be a real happy guy. Yeah, you're not wrong. As we have mentioned a few times, they are hard to get your hands on. So all you got to do, this will be very easy. Just fill out the survey and you could be winning a PS5. All right. So you guys can win a PS5 in the Deadly Phantoms one game one. And we're going to see if Penta can maybe come out and win game two. Any last thoughts before we dive into her tie? Honestly, I'm just excited to see this second game. Let's see if Penta can put that last game behind them. And obviously they need to give uh, Darcivo a little bit more support. So I think if they do that, we might see a different score here. Yeah, I, I would agree. I want to see the triangle that you spoke about. The Boomers took your coaching. It's time for Penta. And guys, make sure you tune in Wednesday, tomorrow, for the ECL Elite broadcast with our good friends Tugi and Sin. Penta. Going to start off with the puck first as they're going to look to build some momentum and do it early. And maybe a power play will help that as Profane Kiss is going to touch up. That's not going to be five tie and I'm surprised. Yeah, I mean, that was a uh, a pretty nasty hit there from behind, too. I, 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 too, am surprised that's not five. But let's see if Penta can keep up that power play percentage that is currently at 100% through two chances. Wow, that is a tough one. My buddy Aiken there folded like a cheap suit as that one's going to be one back here by the Deadly Phantoms. And the puck's over to Profane Kiss. Profane sneaks around a defender, and that's been detrimental for Penta is those players getting def behind the defenders, and you're seeing it early already there, Ty. It almost seems like perhaps Penta's defense is stepping up a little bit too much. Maybe one man needs to sit back a little further. There's Domi fires, and they score! And speaking of Penta's defense, they make a great play there, and the puck gets tipped to the back of the net. So I think we can agree they have the best power play in the league right now. 100%, three power plays, that's looking pretty good. It's pretty amazing, isn't it here, Ty? Is these guys get a power play, they get a power play goal. And if I'm not mistaken, that is going to be Krinke who has all the power play goals, Ty. Man, put two players on that guy because he knows how to put it back in the net on that power play. You gotta watch out for that. 
as Flo just tried to go between the legs and put that one in as we're starting to get the fanciness coming out. Here goes Psycho. He crosses over with Frankie and brings it up the left-hand side to Flo. Flo fires that one on. It's steered away easy by Darcivo. And now Darcivo has a bit of a cushion to work with to make some saves. Kevinator in the neutral zone tries to go over to Aiken. That one's picked off, and here comes Profane. Profane moves that one down low. Patton trying to get that one through. Good job by Krinke coming back as the left winger to help out. Kevinator gets that one in deep, and Frankie pulls it away for the Phantoms. Frankie brings it all the way through into the offensive zone. Saucers it through. Picked up and they score! What a goal by Flo! I mean, we keep going back to the age-old adage of right place, right time, but that truly is that. I mean, Flo is right there. He gets his second goal so far, I believe, in the past two games. There's another one off in Dar Sivo's back and in time. Yeah, you got to feel bad for the guy. I do feel like he's he has good positioning, sound positioning, but it's just not translating. Here goes Krinke. Krinke stops up along the hash marks, goes back to Gazelle. Back to Krinke. Back to Gazelle. Fired, and there's that rebounding defense, but it doesn't matter because Krinke strips the puck and goes bar down. And there we go. We see one of those secondary scoring chances that we were talking about. They didn't get the first rebound, but they did manage to pick up the puck and put another shot on that, and it finds its way through RPH, and now we have a 2-1 to lead for Penta. And there's the unstoppable X Factor being used in front of the net there, Ty. And that one worked very well in order for Cranky to get that puck, strip it, and put it in the back of the net. A very appropriate name for that X Factor. It's going to be won by Penta, and they look to come in two to one hockey game here for them. Answer needed from the Phantoms. Good pick off there by Penta, and they come in. It's Cranky. Krinke still holding. Back to the point to Gazelle. Fired. That one's blocked off a couple bodies, and those are dangerous. As Frankie brings that one up, tries to hit Profane, but it's picked off. But Flo, good job and good puck support. Flo to Profane. Profane coming in. Krinke there and puck support to stop it. As Krinke being very good in the offensive and defensive zone here, Ty. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to see that because obviously it's a two way game. So you got to be. You can, not everybody can be Alex Ovechkin, right? So we need to see that two-way play, especially if Penta wants to come out on top. As now we are going to see a penalty for Kevinator, and this is where the Phantoms need to hold on. As the special teams are good for Penta, as they are 84% on the power play. See if they can get PK, sorry. Here's not to Psycho. mention the Deadly Phantoms don't have the highest power play percentage either. So let's see if they can get something going here to change that. As you see the umbrella again here, Ty, and you're absolutely right. They do need some work in the power play, don't they? They do. I feel like they're moving the puck well, but maybe instead of always resulting to that umbrella, maybe they need to get the puck behind the net a little bit more so that they can look for second opportunities as opposed to just point shots. Psycho fires. That one's blocked. Krinky tries to get it out, but a good job by Psycho. Psycho back door. They score! What a pass to flow! That's what I'm talking about right there. Instead of going to the point, a beautiful pass across. Nice one timer. And Flo gets another goal. Looking great. Did I not call that I thought Flo would be the player of the matchup? Hey, you know what, buddy? It's your first time, and uh, you can chalk that up as an undefeated in the uh, prediction column, my friend, Ty. As uh, what a pass across. You're absolutely right. I think moving the puck to the point opens that up, don't you think, Ty? Is now they're watching that point, man, and that pass across just opens wide, and they take advantage. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Lime. Here's Profane. Behind the net, he drops that one back. He looks for a retrieval pass, finally gets it to him. Profane trying for another pass. As surprising as Profane gets... Wow, what resilience. Profane gets slash, picks it back up and scores, Ty. So no power play opportunity there, and it's not needed as Profane Kiss just manages to pick the puck back up and put it in the back of the net. That's all resilience here, Ty. Phenomenal stuff. And do you think the timeout's necessary? Is that three unanswered here from the Phantoms? 
I mean, I think they have to do something. Obviously, Penta is in this game as opposed to the last game, only being down by one right now. But maybe that's what they need as they get an opportunity there and it goes wide. <laughs> as Ty, I thought it was going to be a 3-3 hockey game as we're used to 1-1s in the first period. What's happening here? As Flo behind the net, he gets bumped off. Good job by Kevin Ader. He moves it ahead to Krinke. Left hand side to Domi. Domi activating from the point. Good pass to Aiken in front is stripped by Frankie. And Frankie gets it ahead for the Phantoms. Frankie has it poked off his stick by Krinke. Another good poke by his partner. Psycho gets Phantoms into the offensive zone. Patton. Drops that in behind the net. Crinky picks it up, moves it out in front, and wow, Ty. That's not yeah, the that's first a risky time. pass right there. And it's not the first time we've seen it tonight, is it? No, it is not. And the last time it didn't turn out very good, but that time they got lucky. That time they did get lucky, Ty. I think the first one was a goal, and we're going to see a power play here for Penta, so maybe a chance to tie the game. Obviously, another opportunity here for Penta to flex their penalty kill muscles here, too, but we'll see how it goes. A big face-off between Patton and Kevinator. Face-off is won by Patton. Back to Frankie. Frankie goes D to D to Psycho. Good pass to Flo. Flo is it poked off his stick. It's loose. Crinke gets it. And good job to get it to Kevinator. And they just send it all the way down. And it's a good start on the PK. As if their power PK is any good as their power play. They'll need to keep on their toes. Profane. Back to Patton. Gets that over across the flow. Flow fighting off a check. Decides to go back. Patton. No. Oh, back door. Domi with a good interception. And Patton brings that one offside with a minute to go in the first period. And a huge hit after the whistle. 44 seconds left to go on this power play too. Some good opportunities, but nothing finding its way through yet. Um, you know, uh, Penta's doing a good job of getting in those passing lanes right now. Crinke trying to fight off four different phantoms to get in. Here comes Profane, back to Psycho, D to D. Here's Frankie, shot on tip, they score! I think that was going in anyways, but Patton's gonna take that goal. Yep, a nice opportunity from the point. And I think the fact that they've been varying up a little bit and not always going to the point has Penta guessing now, which is pretty good. As they, I think that one had seeing eyes. I think that was going straight through. What do you think, Ty? I have to agree. I don't think uh, Darcivo had a chance on that one. You saw the animation he got too, so. Puck's going to be brought in. And there's a good chop at the sideboards. Four to two here in this first period. What a period we have been dealt, Ty. We had 1-1 one, one the whole time. And look at us now in this 4-2 game. Yep, four to two. And let's see if these teams can have some fortitude and keep this up. I like you a lot. Oh, I like you too, Lon. <laughs> as I believe this is going to be magical all season long, as that tip was just as magical as way to get his twig on that one, guys. And if you're enjoying this amazing commentary by myself and my friend Timo, make sure you tune in tomorrow at the same time for the ECL Elite Cast with our close friends Tugi and Sin. As why don't you walk us through these goals here, Ty? Yeah, obviously a look at that first goal there. Just a shot from the point finds its way through the traffic. Varying up their chances here. Another opportunity here to get shut down, but they pick it up. And it's that it's just the fact that you're in the right place at the right time. Obviously a broken play there, but gets that backhand on net and find a way through. Yeah, and that's really all you got to do in this game at, the, at this point with the players in such good positioning, isn't it, Ty? Is you've just got those guys back door. They're in the right spots. They're picking up rebounds if you're on the offense, and they're putting them in the back of the net, guys, as we are here at the ECL Pro Division, and Kevinator puts one in the back of the net. It's a 4-3 game. Just like that, they're getting back on the board. Penta will not back down. This is not going to be the last game where we saw a 6-1 to one differential at the end of the game. This is going to be something from Penta where they push back and they try to make a game of this. And they're doing a great job, and what a good time to start off is at the beginning of the second period, Ty, as we know how very early and very late goals can be detrimental to a team's mental. You're not wrong. I mean, obviously, hockey is a game of momentum, and that's going to bode very well for Penta there as they get on early. Another beautiful chance. Cross, and what a save by RPH showing shades of game one. Aiken throws it across. Another good save by RPH as he steers that one to the corner. And oh boy, Ty, that could have been a 4-4 game. 
Yeah, if it's not for RPH there coming up big with the nerves of steel, uh, you know, like you said, we'd have a 4-4 game, so way to keep him in it. He had me jumping out of my seat on that one, Ty. Is that puck's going to be dropped down? Domi's going to work his way out for Penta. Over to Giselle. Or Gazelle, sorry. Is that that Western Canadian in me? I apologize to all my Euro guys. Is the puck up the right-hand side? That one's poked off first onto it is Profane. Profane sends it behind the net. Flo back to Profane. Flo picks it back up. Look at this play by him. He's got that big body. Sends it out front. It's blocked and steered to the corner. Domi. Oh, almost a primary apple on a one-timer from the point by Psycho. And Psycho doing a good job to get in there. But that is a good penalty drawn. Another hit from behind, Ty. That could have been five as well. Yeah, a good pinch there by Domi stepping up into the play, even though he's a defenseman. And it draws a penalty, so good for him. One thing I do notice in these Euro games is the defense get a lot more active than in NA, as we'll touch base on that, as we might see a face-off play. There it is. Back to Frankie, over to Psycho, and they set up. Let's see if we get the umbrella. As Puck behind the net is picked up by Profane, he looks to pop that one out and can't. Oh, Aaron pass all the way down. Is that does go all the way down? Is that's an oh that was an oof moment, wasn't it? Ties the puck gets brought back through. It's going to be jarred loose back into the neutral zone. Psycho tries again. Psycho dumps it in on the now, power play. Huge. Now that's play. what the boomers needed to be doing with their yeah, dump and chase. That's right, the high dump. As it didn't work here for the Phantoms. Good job by Penta to hold this off. Psycho now brings it through the neutral zone. Left-hand side to Flo. Flo drops that one back to Frankie. Frankie out front. Pops up Flo. Flo shoots. Great save by Darcivo. As it's still loose. Oh, somebody get that one out of there. Domi finally does. And Domi carries it out for Penta. Looks for that sauce ahead. Can't get it through Profane. Great pass to Flo. Flo drops that one back over to Frankie. And Frankie stops up along the hash marks. Frankie passes that one over to his partner, Psycho. And Psycho dumps that one in. And it's boomer time, baby. As that puck gets dumped in deep and picked up by Profane. Profane. Flo back to Profane. He wraps it back to Flo. Flo back to Frankie. Tipped on. And that one's blocked. As Profane picks it up again. Profane. It's loose. Shot on. And they score. Patton finds the back of the net nice play by Patton there obviously just staying with the puck and honestly once I saw that play start to break up it kind of felt like this is the way it was going to go you can see there that kick aside the puck went out and then there you go it's really hard for a goalie to track something like that and get the proper animation so Darcivo uh, letting through another one unfortunately not his night as here comes Krinke Kevin It'll be interesting to see how uh, Penta battles back here. Obviously, the last goal they had scored against them, they got one right back. Let's see if they can do that yet again. Right, Ty, and the answer is crucial. Is here they come, and what a save by RPH as he robs Krinke on the right-hand side. Patton tries to move that one ahead, but it's going to be turned around. Here comes Aiken. Aiken coming through. Oh, big hit. Look at the Phantoms as they just closed in on that tie. Yep, that's uh, a little bit of what they're known for here, obviously having flow with the big hits. Here comes Penta as they just put that one right onto RPH, but RPH makes an errant pass. Kevinator shoots and pops loose and great rebound control by Frankie. Frankie over to Profane, back to Frankie. Frankie tries to take it to the house, but Kevinator with a good interception and Krinke with a 200 IQ pass. What a breakout. Krinke coming in, pass across, and it went too far. Still loose, but it's picked up by Psycho. And what a breakout by Penta to avoid that huge check. But here comes Psycho back door and they score. It's Flo with his hat trick goal. Just end to end, like I was saying earlier, it feels like almost like we're watching 3v3 hockey here as it just goes end to end. Flo capitalizing yet again, looking great out there. But honestly, this would not be happening if it weren't for the human highlight reel at the other end in RPH. This has been amazing, exciting stuff. From Penta and the Phantoms as it is a huge split, but it's very exciting back and forth, isn't it, Ty? It is, you know, for a game that the score hasn't been super close, uh, you know, it does feel like a, a pretty good matchup. 
And Psycho drops that back down to Profane. Profane fires, it's loose, they score again. Patton puts in number seven. You have to give a lot of credit to Kiss there. That was just a beautiful play to circle off the boards, find the open man, and get that goal. Well, Ty, this is pretty interesting, isn't it? We're in the middle of a 7-3 battle here. Do you think Penta can kind of maybe turn this around? They've got a period. What do they have? 21 and a half minutes, Ty. Penta might be able to salvage some of this, but I don't see them coming out with a win in this one after facing six in the last game and now seven in this game with a period left to go. Buck is going to be brought out with 30 seconds left in the second period up the left-hand side. Big bump off Patton. Now he's poke check. And Kevinator tries to saucer it up. There's going to be a chance here, but a good pick off there by Gazelle. Flow out front. Big diving play there by Penta. And maybe a little frustration as well, Ty. Yeah, I would say so. We see the player of the period here, Flo, doing a great job of putting that puck in the back of the net past Darcivo. He's having himself a hell of a game, and you love to see it. That he is, an RPH as well. He hasn't ha needed much action, but when he has, he has been sharp, Ty. Yeah, he certainly stands tall in his crease, that's for sure. He's coming up, like I said, it seems like he's a human highlight reel, just coming up with massive saves, non, just nonstop. There's a shot on, you're going to see, and a little bit of a broken play ends up and a goal there, Ty. What about this one? Yeah, I mean, we're seeing a lot of those broken plays here. We'll see how this one pans out. See, it gets broken up, the kick out. It's okay. really hard for a goalie to track that, another broken play. And that's what we've been talking about is right place, right time, right? Is that it's more about being in your high IQ positioning than anything else. As we get well, back... let's face it. Like you said, it's, it's high IQ. If you're not in the right place there, you don't get that rebound. You don't get that goal. Period number three in the ECL Pro Division for NHL, a gamer... He is Baker in time. Oh, I am It's King Lime, and we are on for our last period of the evening. Kiss dumps that one down deep. 7-3 here for the Phantoms. Penta looking to come back. Aiken tries to clear that one out. He's going to reset in his own zone. Good pass there. Massive Aiken hit by two. Flo. As he's doing what he does best, isn't it, Ty? The big body. In this game, it seems like what he does best is scoring, but yeah, he's got a big body, that's for sure, and he sure knows how to use it. If you look at his stats there, Ty, it looks like he has three game-winning goals for his team in eight games played, so obviously not shy of being the hero. No, not at all, and he plays the role well, so why not? That's right. We love the big body goal scorers, don't we? As Puck that is brought do. in. Profane tries to get that one down low. It's going to be stripped away. Profane gets it right back. Profane walks around down low, throws it back to Flo. And Profane fires and great save there by Darcivo. Yeah, good job by Darcivo there to not only make the first save, but to hold on to it afterwards and make sure that they can get a whistle here. Big hit behind the play yet again. It seems like these teams do not like each other. And speaking of teams that don't like each other, Wednesday, uh, make sure you tune in for Frolunda versus HV71 in IQ against Ori Bro Hockey. Because that'll be with Sin and Tugi tomorrow night. His puck over to the left hand side. Here's Flo. Flo trying to get in. He can't. Good job by Frankie and Puck support, but Aiken takes it away. Aiken into the zone. Tries to find his defenseman, but not a great pass as that one pops out to the neutral zone. And it's given away to Patton here for the Phantoms. Is he just trying to kind of try to outweigh the Ford checker there with no ado? But Patton coming into Flo. And what a save, but Flo gets it. But I believe that's going to be goalie interference as we have another rugby scrum in the crease. Yeah, it looks like that one's going to have to be called back, but you got to give credit where credit's due. I mean, I know it's not a goal, but still, it could have been, and uh, that's just due to good positioning. Yeah, six players in the crease and a goalie. I'm not sure I've ever seen that before, Ty, as we had three white shirts, three red shirts, and a goaltender in white. As puck poked off by Flo Aiken brings it in. 
Aiken takes it around behind the net. 10 minutes to go in the third period. They need a boatload of goals, and that was almost one. That's a great save by RPH. Big block there by Psycho. And here goes Flo the other way for the Vanams. Flo over the line, looking for a pass into the middle of the ice. Good job by Domi to intercept that. And here goes Aiken over to Krinke. Looks like we have a delayed penalty on the play here. Another power play going to be coming to Penta. Oh my God, the own goal. You've seen it here, folks. Unfortunate for Penta there. I've never seen that before in my life. Never mind casted it. That no. is going to be an own goal from Penta as you've got more than one first here, Ty, as that is unbelievable. Four minutes in penalties and an own goal. That's tough. You know that one stings. Hopefully the fact that they're on an extended power play here will help them get out of this funk. But I mean, now being down eight to three and that eighth goal being an own goal does not look very good. Oh, that's a tough one. As puck over to the left-hand side, Frankie tries to bring that in and we're gonna see some four and four hockey. And things just get worse for Penta here as they take a, a that's not a needed penalty there. Not a needed penalty. And uh, charging. Back back to the box. Here we go. Yeah, I think that's a frustration penalty, Ty. I think they're just wanting to get rid of that. Obviously, after that own goal goes in, um, your mindset has to be in a, in a tough space right now. I have to agree with you. As here goes four on four hockey. Lots of space. Big save by Darcibo. And Kevinator's going to start out from his own end here for Penta. Lots of space out there as the puck gets dropped over to Aiken. Aiken stops up at the hash marks, looking for a lane. Goes behind the net to Kevinator. Kevinator moves that back to the point. That one's blocked by the Phantoms. And we're going to see a breakaway here for Flo. Flo scores! And it's a 9-3 game. I mean, you got to give Darcivo credit for trying to go for it all when you're already down. Uh, but Flo, just getting it done. My player of the game, and obviously... I made the right pick. Yeah, I'd say is uh, Dar Darcivo showing shades of Dominic Hasek as he just started skating out and yelling at him there as uh, tried to get the poke check there, Ty. It didn't work, and this has turned into quite a game. That it has. Looking like football score numbers as that puck is going to be won by the Phantoms. Flo comes in, he's offside, and you've said it enough, but he has played a fantastic hockey game here. Yeah, he certainly has. He's obviously showing off his hockey IQ because he's always in the right place at the right time. And that's what this game has been. A lot of right place at right time. As Aiken comes in, fires that one on, easily steered aside by RPH. And Profane sends it up the left-hand side to Frankie. Frankie has flow again. Look at this, another breakaway. As they got to give Darcivo a break here. His flow wraps that around to Profane. Profane trying to carry that into the slot. No can do. Aiken. Moves that ahead, little self sauce from Kevinator, goes across to Krinke, back to the point. Here's Giselle, fires that one on, and that one's easily steered aside by RPH. And just routine saves here for RPH time. Yep, and we are back to even strength play with only three minutes and 30 seconds left to go here. Two on one, there is broken up and pass through the middle over to Flo and Flo again with some room, pass across, good dive. Flo with a second chance to Darcivo. Look at this, he's just sending it out. They try to dunk, he says, fine, I'll hold on. Yep, again there, Flo though at the side of the net looking for that extra opportunity and almost had another one there. Buck is gonna be sent up the boards. Here's Psycho. Psycho brings it down. That one's jarred loose behind the net. Domi picks it up for Penta and works it out. Over to Krinke. Back to Domi. Domi sends that all the way down. It's onto the stick of RPH. He shoots. He says, why not? One went in. As Kevinator. Up to Aiken. Aiken has it stripped off his stick. And they fire it down. Looking for an Omaha play there, Ty. As this is just looking like uh, a little bit of beer league hockey as we wrap up the end of it here. Yeah, I feel like maybe the Phantoms are trying not to uh, rub any salt in the wound and they're just, you know, throwing it down there, looking for that one opportunity that generally might not work out, but still. Big lead, 9-3. to three. You gotta go for it. 
It's Flo to Patton. Good blocker saved by Darcivo. Patton over to Flo. Flo back to the point of Psycho. Psycho fires, tip, they score. And there's what? another one. What a tip. That was a gorgeous tip. Stick down on the ice. Beautiful shot placement too, but that one goes up and over the shoulder, I believe. Just an awesome redirection. What a tip. Is that's yeah. going to be Patton's fourth of the evening, and that is just perfectly placed, Ty. Wow. Yeah, that was beautiful. Shot along the ice. Stick right in, the, in a perfect placement to put that one up over the shoulder. The only thing that's better placed than that is Timo right beside me. As the puck gets moved that's over right. to the left-hand side. Flo comes in, drops that back. Frankie, DDD to Psycho. Psycho comes down bottom of the circle. He curls around and he's hit from behind again. And Crinkle's going to go sit for two. And that is the third hit from behind this hockey game. Yeah, I'm really surprised to see that none of these have resulted in more than two minutes. But, uh, you know, the Phantoms are making the most of it. And uh, not a lot of time left here, but they do have another opportunity. I can imagine the myths that would be flying if that would be happening. It's three hits from behind as that one's taken by Profane Kiss. He tries to walk that one in. Ten seconds to go in the game. That one's clapped down, held in, though, by Psycho. Psycho, they're going for 11. Shoots! Big save, Darcivo. And that does it as the Deadly Phantoms tie are going to walk away with two wins in the ECL Pro tonight. Yep, the Deadly Phantoms improving now to 6-2-2 two, and two after those two wins. Uh, looking very good this evening. And obviously the difference in the standings actually played out here. Um, not, not so much in the uh, Boomer series that we watched previously, but this time around, yeah, it was pretty close to the standings. Yeah, and a great job by... Um by the Deadly Phantoms to move up quite a few spots here, Ty. Yeah, you have to imagine, um, starting at 4-2-2 two two before these two games and now finishing at 6-2-2, two two, that's going to be good for them. Yeah, I think they won a couple more as well, Ty, so I think they might even be sitting at 8-2-2 two two now. Um, well, there you go. As they've moved their way up. So um, great stuff there by all teams involved tonight, especially the Deadly Phantoms and our boys down at Dynastia that had a fantastic 2-0 series in both games tonight, Tech. That they did. Um, just some great hockey to watch tonight. I'm, I was so pleased to be a part of this broadcast, and this was a lot of fun to see, uh, you know, the offensive prowess, obviously, of those Deadly Phantoms uh on display here this evening yeah i'll get you to walk us through some of these goals but how about flow with a nice five bomb yeah i mean like i said i picked him as my player of the game not for the scoring though and that's what he did so well this evening all right a little pass across from the d circling back looking for an opportunity fires one on and finds its way through like you said that one might have been a bit of a seeing eye shot i think it was going through either way uh, yeah, I agree with you on that one, Ty. I think that one was going through, but why not get a touch on it, right? You're grabbing a point there, and then you see the Phantoms coming down on this one, and it just ends up being another odd man rush, Ty, which we spoke a lot about in game one, and it obviously handed into a few here tonight. Yeah, you're not wrong. Obviously, we just saw that what nice one-timer goal on the odd man chance. Another one here. So this is where he spun off the boards, throws one on net. It pops out, and right place, right time. There we go, sneaking its way by. And we said that a lot tonight as well, didn't we, Ties? Right place, right time. We see that a ton. It's not, there was a few very nice plays uh, for sure, but a lot of the goals were really just right time, right place, unless these are odd man rushes. Well, I mean, even there on the breakaway, that's a, just a great play by Flo to be right up the center, ready for that pass. And I think you were right about Penta's D as they were playing uh, a little bit aggressive. But when you're down by this many goals, you don't really have a choice as we see a great tip in front by Patton. No, you're right about that. Certainly right. Another look here at Flo as he gets away on the breakaway, in on the break. The dive out, but he can't get it done. And he puts that one in the back of the net. 
gorgeous replay there by Frankie giving us the look at our boy Flo with the five bomb obviously my player of the game 22 shots there for the deadly phantoms to only nine for Penta more goals for the phantoms than shots for Penta in this hockey game yeah, I mean, the Deadly Phantoms obviously putting a lot of pucks on net between both those games. I believe they had 43 shots. So obviously, you know, there's a lot of power to putting pucks on net, especially when you can get those secondary chances or tips in front. Yeah, it's a fantastic night here in the ECL Pro. Lot of wins, lot of losses, Ty. But I'm interested to have a look at the standings to see where our guys, the Deadly Phantoms, jumped up a few places as they played absolutely phenomenal tonight. What do you see here? Yeah, I mean, obviously we had the Phantoms sitting at, what, fifth before this game, and now they jump up to fourth. That goal differential making a big jump for them too. 26 goals for and 19 goals against. Yeah, they definitely did move up there and Penta moving down to 12. So we saw them both on the left-hand side and it looks like our boys Dynastia coming out with a couple more Ws to keep them at the top of the board there as uh, what a great, great night they had, Ty. Yeah, I mean, you have to imagine, like we said, it's still early in the in the season, but I mean, two weeks in and they're doing that well, 10 wins, two losses, like they're going to be they're going to be a dynamo this season for sure. As I kind of jumped the gun, I was so excited to see where the deadly phantoms were sitting. Why don't we have a look at the scores from around the league that we weren't able to catch up on while we were bringing you some great coverage? What do you see here, Ty? Once again, look at all these overtime games. Uh, the first game up, we've got Stargazing versus Fiasco. That one goes to Stargazing 3-2. to two. Um, Obviously, the game we just saw with the 10-3 win for the Phantoms. But another OT game between WannaCry and Geeks Energy Esports. 2-1 uh, to one win, so another closely contested game. And then there's yet another OT game between Renescore and Pata Halahala. And that's 5-4 to four win for Pata and looking great. Um, you know, like I said, a lot of close games and it's fun to see because there's nothing better than a closely contested hockey game. Yeah, so those are your results from around the league. Good stuff. I think we should have a look at the standings from the second group as we didn't get to cast anyone from that second group today. But take a look here, Ty, at 41 goals for, for the Eagles leading the chart. Yeah, that's the thing that's standing out to me too. Look at the 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 uh the, the goals against too. It's only seven goals against. Like that's an incredible goal differential. Obviously, they deserve to be the number one team with that nine one and zero record through ten games. Yeah, great, great stuff here in Group Two, and yeah, the, the goal differential is amazing. Even if you look at the Firebirds sitting at five. Goals against in six games. That is uh, some great goaltending, Ty. Yeah, obviously, either great goaltending or great defensive play or a little bit of both, right? Yeah, that is for sure. Great stuff here in group two, guys. Everybody moving their way up. We are very, very early here in the ECL Pro and I expect to see a lot of great games coming up here in the future so we uh we gotta say before we wrap things up here we gotta say thank you to X Bill Wilhelm Colvon Lakriti and ST Hockey and of course guys if you enjoyed this coverage you are going to enjoy the coverage tomorrow for the ECL Elite with Tugi and Sin with some great games on the docket here, Ty. Yeah, obviously we have uh, Frolunda versus HV71 coming up. That's going to be a great game. And, uh, and go ahead, you take away the second matchup. Yeah, IQ is going to be playing against, sorry if I don't say this correctly, Ori. 
Ori Bro Hockey. And thank you to my producer in my ear for helping me out with that one, guys. Make sure you guys fill out the survey for the PS5 as you're going to want to get your hands on that. Fill out the community survey for a chance to win a PS5 digital edition. That is all from us. From from the ECL Elite, or sorry, from the ECL Pro Division. We'll be back next Tuesday with Timo and myself for four more great games from everyone behind the scenes at NHL Gamer, from all of our sponsors, and of course, my man Timo. We hope you have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow night for more ECL Elite action.